Welcome to the Memorizing Pharmacology podcast. I'm Tony Guerra, the pharmacist and author of the Memorizing Pharmacology book series, bringing you mnemonics, cases, and advice for succeeding in pharmacology. Sign up for the email list at memorizingpharm.com to get your free suffixes cheat sheet or find our mobile-friendly, self-paced online pharmacology review course at residency.teachable.com forward slash p forward slash mobile. Let's get started with the show. All right, we're going to go into antiarrhythmics or antidysrhythmics is really more correct. Uh, pharmacology mnemonics, and the first step is is really to see where these are. And you're going to hear class one usually with Roman numerals rather than these kind of numbers. Uh, but uh, class one sodium channel blockers. Class two is the beta blocker. Class three are potassium channel blockers. Class four, calcium channel blockers, and class five uh, are kind of the unknown or extras. And uh, beta blockers and calcium channel blockers may be familiar from hypertension drugs, uh, but these other ones might be a little bit new. So there's Vaughn Williams, which is how we kind of classify these. And uh, usually your questions are going to be in some way, you have to know what the sodium channel blockers are or which ones are potassium channel blockers. So we're going to do a couple of mnemonics to just kind of get you knowing what's what, and then we'll go from there. So I uh, made a little story, nab money in Kansas City, police are mad, uh, a way to remember that number one is NA, which is, it's actually for natrium, but it's sodium, uh, so sodium channel blockers, and then the B in nab, and you can put two Bs here to make it more clear that it's going to be beta blockers, and then Kansas City represents three and four, which are going to be potassium, which is calcium or calcium. Uh, that's the K, and then CA are the calcium from calcium channel blockers. So NAB, KC, and then MAD, the others that are kind of in this fifth group are magnesium, adenosine, and digoxin. Uh, so that's kind of one way to do it. Another way is to maybe make a sentence like some block kings and castles with MAD moves. So the sum is for sodium, Okay, and that would be Na plus. Block would be for beta blockers. K would be for potassium and kings. Ca from castles would be calcium channel blockers. And then mad moves, the mad represents the magnesium, adenosine, and digoxin. And you know, I've got a little picture here of a king and a, and a castle in chess. Okay, so two different ways to remember those, um, but some students have to remember like all of them, like the a lot of the drugs within the classes. So the class one's actually divided up into class one A, one B, and one C. And traditional way to remember this is double quarter pounder with lettuce, tomato, mayo, and more fries, please. So class one A is disopyramide, <laughs> quinidine, procainamide. That's the double quarter pounder. Uh, the lettuce, tomato, mayo is class 1B, lidocaine, maxillotine, tocanide. And then class 1C, more fries please, is the morosizine, flecainide, propofenone. So if you have to remember all of those, then uh, you know hopefully this is helpful. And then we kind of add the other one. So a, a beta blocker, the nice thing is that the endings are the same. So it's like bisoprolol, atenolol, metoprolol, ending with the O-L-O-L. -O -L. Uh, I just put the three... BAM, B-A-M for bisoprolol, atenolol, metoprolol. You can think of class two because they are, they are you know, have two Bs in beta blocker to remind you that's class two. Uh, class three is potassium blockers, the SAD poets. So SAD is for sodalol, amiodarone, dophilotide, and the poets is for potassium uh, to remember that one. Class four is the calcium block channel blockers with four very dill pickles so it's class four and the very dill stands for ver apamil and dill tiazum okay uh, and then the class five the mad group is magnesium adenosine and digoxin so if you have to remember all of them uh, this is a way to do it so we can do a little little quiz here uh, make sure that you got this down 
So on the left, I have sodium beta blockers, potassium calcium channel blockers, and then the unknown. And then adenosine, procainamide, metoprolol, diltiazem, and amiodarone are not in the right order. So how do we get the right order? Well, we think about our you know, mnemonics here and, and our sodium. Again, it's going to be that double quarter pounder, so the P from procainamide. The beta blockers end in OLOL, so that's group two. And again, two Bs to remind you it's group two. Uh, the potassium is going to be that sad poet, and the A in sad poet is amiodarone. Then our four very dill pickles are uh, the diltiazem and the verapamil, that's four. And then the mad group is adenosine. So uh, that magnesium, adenosine, digoxin, that's in our fifth group. And so it would look like this uh, if the answers are correct. Okay. So let's just take a look at some of the characteristics of some of these. Uh, so for example, if you've got uh, group 1A procainamide, this is the P in the double quarter pounder. Uh, it's good for atrial fib, supraventricular tachycardia, VTAC, uh, it's really chemical cardio version. Uh, our mechanism is sodium. And hypotension is really the, the big one here, can cause a wide QRS. Uh, but if we have hypotension as an adverse effect, we probably don't want to give it to a hypotensive patient. Uh, then congestive heart failure, second, third degree heart block, uh, all of these would be uh, contraindications. And then what are we going to do? Well, we'll make sure to watch their labs. Uh, and then uh, an ECG uh, would also be important as well. So that's procainamide. Get to amiodarone. Uh, now we're talking about ventricular fibrillation rather than atrial fibrillation. Uh, resistant VTAC, um, you can give it for atrial and ventricular dysrhythmias, uh, but uh, that's probably where you would, you would put it. Uh, potassium is our mechanism. Again, this is group three. We kind of skipped over the beta blockers. Uh, and there's a number of things that you're going to have with adverse effects you really want to tell the patient about. First, uh, the hypotension. So uh, just um, getting that blood pressure just kind of dropping. Uh, blue facial hue. Uh, couldn't use the blue man group because those guys are, are actually a, a thing. So I uh, just found this picture of, and I thought it was clever that they're kind of pacing and waiting in line. And they've got blue faces and, well, blue bodies too. Uh, and then vision changes. So while it's kind of tough to say, well, what does vision change look like? Uh, kind of having this rainbow um, iris just kind of uh, reminds you that vision changes. So hypotension, blue facial hue, and vision changes. Uh, bradycardia and shock are really contraindications for this one. And then, you know, we would do the labs uh, on this one, make sure they're on the up and up. Uh, group five, so adenosine, adenocard, this, this is really for SVT or supraventricular tachycardia. Um, what it does is it blocks the AV node to, to reset the heart. So um, I really struggled with <laughs> how to represent this. Uh, so I thought flushing and impending doom, just a terrible, terrible feeling. And uh, one of my daughters wrote a, a book about the Goblin King, and so here's the Goblin King. So if I saw him, I, I would feel impending doom, and you can see he's got this kind of red facial flushing. Uh, and then just a little watch here to remind you that it's a really fast IV push, so all of this happens really fast. It's really horrible for a little while, I mean 10 seconds, 15 seconds, um, but uh, then, then we're done. Uh, really contraindications, bradycardia, patient's uh, shock, uh, and then you know, what do we want to monitor? We want to make sure to put cardiac monitor on. And um, Modified Valsalva maneuver uh, is just proven to be uh, a bit better. Um, and then the, the Valsalva, if you aren't familiar with it, it's where you kind of plug your nose to, uh, to pop your ears. Okay. All right. Uh, so again, this is informational purposes only. Uh, it's not medical advice. If you have a medical condition, contact a medical professional. Thanks for listening to the Memorizing Pharmacology podcast. You can find episodes, cheat sheets, and more at memorizingpharm.com. Again, you can sign up for the email list at memorizingpharm.com to get your free suffixes cheat sheet or find our mobile-friendly, self-paced online pharmacology review course at residency.teachable.com forward slash p forward slash mobile. Thanks again for listening.